Arsenal fans act like they can't see him They wanna talk about party When they know that we got the best DM Kwasia, Kwasia some Kwa Like what world do you live in when cats step in It's like Did you see what the rock is cooking? What? Arsenal fans act like they can't see him They wanna talk about party When they know that we got the best DM Kwasia, Kwasia some Kwa Like what world do you live in when cats step in It's like Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Yo, this is the OT99 Banter Room where opinions are shared and smoke get served. Man United served smoke on a platter again against Reading. Look, people may say it's only Reading. People may say it's only not an Forest when we beat them. But you know what? Look, Manchester United, even Charlton, but Manchester United could only play what's in front of them. And Man United are getting through our games and just doing what we need to do. You know what I mean? Getting business done. And the one thing I like is Eric Den Haag. <laughs> He's taking it all seriously. I know people are worried about, you know, um, match, I mean, match, uh, what do you call it, injuries or people not getting rest. But look, he's moving militant. We're treating it game by game. And we are going to be in many finals under this manager, man. Many finals to come. But look, how you guys doing, man? NK Edwin, talk to me. How are you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm all right. I ain't gonna lie. The first, to me, the first half was bore, a bit boring. Like, Jeez, straight in, straight in there. But, <laughs> but do you know what? I, no I don't think we'll, yeah but you know what second half we, like it was a lot of football yeah but there was no like there was nothing there was nothing too piercing you know what i mean but yeah it was, look we there's games we need to win and like win by a wide margin you know what i mean so just on that first half it was annoying though i i can't lie the first half was annoying it looked like we was playing good football but it just reminded me of arsenal of old days not this not this arsenal where you play good football attacking football but nothing comes of it and that's the most annoying thing to me is when like i was saying to you like offline we had 14 attempts on target in the first half and i mean 14 goal attempts sorry and one one shot on target we had a couple of block shots and loads of them were off target and for me we ain't potent enough we ain't clinical enough and all that shows is that our final decision making at, the, at, at, at that part of the pitch where it matters the business and it's not on point do you know what i mean and if you're playing against um opposition like this you should be going into the first half at least two goals man united should have been at, at least two goals up in that first half and man united's going in nil nil i found that disappointing and i feel like ince was more the more happier man in the first half but obviously we turned it around in the second half so but it is what it is my nk how you feeling man talk to me yeah i'm good i'm good man look i i, I echo what edwin said man look the first the first half was it was back to the old man united you know when team come and pack the bus and then they said, okay, then you know what? Well, we set up compact, come and break us down. We couldn't break them, we, we couldn't break them down, you know. Same old thing where center backs have too much of the ball. We pass, pass, pass. When we get to the final third, then we lack ideas. We don't know what to do, you know. And most of our chances were uh coming from like uh, short, we were rushing it when we go to the final final <laughs> third. And, uh, and as you said, that's why we had what you call it, uh, one shot on target, because we were too rush when we go to the final third. I think that need to change you know we need like the creativity and the movement need to be better when we get to the the, uh, the final third if we want to be creating like more like what do you call it more clear cut chances it needs to be more about as a collective movement passing and also at time just knowing when to like rush it and knowing when not to rush it man so that's something that we need we still need to work on whether it's going to be with this group of players or we need to bring in new ones going forward we'll see man but this squad has always have an issue when teams set up like that. We, we always do. Look, talking about like the final third stuff and the, 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 the those players, right? Look, Anthony, I must say, moving on to more positive news, like Anthony, to me, had probably his best game in the United shirt against, uh, uh, what do you call it, Reading. Um, would you agree? I mean, I thought he'd done a hell of a job going forward, man. It's, he brought something different. I saw a link up play with him and Aaron Wambasaka. I think you were saying it offline as well in terms of the runners around Anthony was bringing the best out of Anthony. I see him cutting in. I see him yeah, on the no. left, right? What's Remember I said, I, I said that maybe you would, would agree with NK because you you and NK always go back. NK made a good point last game that has to, like Anthony's only good if people are running around him and giving him options. And that's what we saw the last game. Like 
You saw wan giving him options on the inside and outside. You saw players closer to him, so he wasn't isolated. So he didn't give him the chance to do that. those little, little shimmers. Mate, we even saw him shoot with his right foot. Bro, I see him shoot. When he's shot with his right foot, I was like, oh, you know what time throws? It was time for us. It's like... <laughs> but, but I think, yeah, what NK said was right. Like, once he's got runners and people around him, you see the best out of him. Because then he's really good at that link-up play where he can give and go, give and go. And he, he played well. He played well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Anton, Anton is like a, what do you call it, a playmaker that play on the wings, you know. I think him, him and Sancho are very similar, like, in that type of, like, sense uh, a little bit. He's only, because if, if, if you look at this game, compared to, like, his previous games, the only difference is, like, uh, yesterday, what do you call it, against Reading, when he actually put in a true pass, there was some someone there. Whereas before, when he put in there, nobody would be there. Credit, you have to give credit to Wamba Saka because he actually made Anthony look good, you know. And also the goal that Casemiro scored. If you said a few weeks, yeah, if it is a few weeks ago, uh, that 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 what you call that movement Casemiro did, you know, Casemiro, if Casemiro don't do that run, Anthony would just literally all he would do is just cut back and pass back, and fans would be would, would be annoyed by that. So you see that movement is what is making him look good. He, he, he's not beating, he's not going uh, beating players like uh, for the whole 19 minutes. He's not doing that. All he's been, all he done yesterday, for the most part, that was good, was literally putting progressive passes inside. His shooting was still awful. He, like his shooting was still, uh, he was still bad. His crossing was still bad. So that side needs to be improved. But yesterday, what we saw was people just moving around him and that brought the best out of him. So you want to get the best out of him get players closer to him, get players making runs of, uh, off him, and uh, you'll find the best too. But one thing I saw too is that the manager in the last few two games has at times been switching him and Bruno around, where he's making Anthony get into the number 10 uh, position more to central. kind of like get him more yeah, m- uh, more on the ball. So I don't know if it's something that uh, he's going to do more of going forward. I don't know the thinking behind it. I don't know if it's to That's help Anthony get more into the game. That's and what I don't saying. know what that means by Bruno in terms of affecting yes. Bruno's game. But by the way, only time will tell. Brighton's up by two, 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 one. It's like ninety something minute on the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's looking good. It's looking good. Again, Hopefully, so make my water. Let, 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 let me change my, my my water to that man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Back to back to Anthony. I think what I noticed again, like you, you know, we noticed this in a previous game as well, where Anthony was a lot. He was doing a lot of stuff centrally. We see it today where you see him swapping with Bruno. He's doing things where he's active in a game centrally. And I know we brought him for to be holding on the right-hand side and I hope that, you know, remains. But I've been seeing a lot of his work where we're just looking a lot more unpredictable now where he's, where he's switching positions now. But one thing I noticed as well is a confidence thing. And I know Eric Ten Hag's definitely been working with Anthony and telling him to try different things in these games because he's not just hogging the wings now like he, like he would normally do for a, a, a game. He's been, over the last few games, been doing things a bit different and um when i see him um take on baba rackman or something like ramen look this guy picked it up on the halfway line was taking this guy on running at him dribbling i'm just like that this is what i wanted to see like where has this anthony been where has he been because i know that players around him help him do you know what i mean with aaron wan basaka overlapping and all, i know that but there's something about when you're taking on a man show me what you can do look he picked up that ball the way he burnt Ram and I was just like, bro, I want to see more of that as well as your interlink and play with your fullbacks. As long as your interlink and play with Bruno, like as long as the linking up and putting in free balls to guys like Casavero, whoever's making an overlapping run. And I like that from Anthony. I think it was his best game. And, you know, he got man of the match. And it was a tough call to say Who? man of the match. He got man of the match. Who? Anthony. Anthony. He got man of the match. And that's a bit crazy to me because, I mean, I can understand it. I thought he had the I, best I've, game. I've got, I've, got, I've got a different man of the match, bro. Bro, you, for me, yeah, you don't score two goals as a DM and not be called man of the match personally, but it is what it is. No, it? I didn't even, I didn't even no, give no, it to it's him. No, it's not always about GA, man. No, it's about GA, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> Every back day, his, GA, GA, GA. His, I told you, bro, man. I told you, back to his guy. Who? Cool. I told you he said not every day is GA because I'm bigging up Casemiro now. Nah, it's not every day is GA because he wants to yeah, back his I ain't No worries. No hey, worries. It's probably for the end of the, the video, but I gave it to Juan Bissaka. But... Yeah, Juan Bissaka was cold. Can't lie. Juan Bissaka was cold. Look, talking about defenders, though, man, Maguire, man. Like, he got brought in. Um, you know, Varane got a rest. I hope he's not injured. He got a rest. 
Maguire came into that position, Lindelof got shifted to the right hand side. We saw Maguire brought in against Reading, but it was probably a smart move. No, was it, uh, Lindelof was on the left hand side. Was he on the left? Maguire was on the right. Yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maguire, Maguire's, Maguire's not allowed to play on the left no more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's bad. He's bad. He's, he's, he's bad from bad. Burn left. Look, I saw like Andy Carroll, like full grown beard, you get you looking real greasy. That guy in the air is one of the coldest, um, Andy Carroll. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate it didn't work out for him in his previous teams like that, but he's at Reading. And one thing we know, Aerially, he's going to be an issue. And we brought on Maguire to try and counter that because Maguire, well, one thing he's decent at defending wise is when the ball's in the air and he's sort of the first one onto it. But we didn't really see Andy Carroll get dominated really like that um, in the air. I think that Andy Carroll was winning all of his battles in the air and bringing it down. Just luckily for us, we didn't get smoked with fast wingers for him to put through. But what's your thoughts on Maguire's performance today? Do you think? Because for me, I see him putting in a lot of good balls, spraying it around left, right, up, down. He was doing a lot of good passing for me. And I'm just like, bro, if you've got that in your locker, utilise it, you get me? And I don't see that. And I hear people talking I mean, about I mean, it. Let Edwin, Edwin take this question. Bro, I hear people <laughs> no, talking no, about it. Like Lindelof, honest, yeah. Lindelof has got it, but he don't do it enough. You know what I mean? He done it. He done it. Who done it? Like, for who put in Casemiro? Was it Lind Someone put in Casemiro. Oh, no, I can't remember. Maybe, maybe I'm talking about a different game. Maybe it was Martinez, but we don't. We got guys that are good passers of the ball. Oh, yeah, it's another other, other game where uh, what do you call it? Ma Martinez, Martinez. putting, uh, yeah, putting. I don't know who he putting. Like Bruno, he putting Bruno. Go on, putting Bruno. Why don't we? Why don't these guys unleash the shackles and use what they've got? These men can spray the ball, and they don't do it enough. But Maguire was doing it yesterday, and I, 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 I was. It was good to see. But what's your thoughts? <laughs> what's your thoughts on your arts and Mr. Edwin? You know what, as I said, like, same with Bruno. If they play well, they play well, isn't it? I think he had a good game. The only thing he has to be careful of is when he plays against certain teams, he likes to foul a lot, but he gets away with it. So he needs to be careful going forward. He does this thing where he leans on you or he'll, like, pull your shirt. And I saw him do it a couple of times in the boxes and, and certain referees will give that as a foul, as a penalty. But overall, I think he never got caught out too much or clearly for me to say look for someone that's not played consistently i think he had a good game mm. he didn't look off the pace too much but it's a little niggles he just probably has to improve on and i think because he lacks certain things like pace he does that to compensate for it mm. but mm. him and who else was it was it him and maybe fred they dropped to the ground too quick remember that time in the box where the person <laughs> fake shot fake <laughs> shot them like the only no, the only problem with doing that and it's, not, it's, it's to him and maybe fred is you doing that it allows the player to go on his other foot and either shoot or pass to someone else. You can't be too quick to go to the ground because what happens if the player actually shifts the ball and you tackle them and touch them? So mm. I think that's the little things he's got about look, overall he had a good game. Yeah. I can't I can't I'm not gonna stand here and say, Oh yeah, he played bad. Mm. But mm. he's still not I don't think he's still I don't think it was good enough to still break into the, the first team. Mm. Yeah, he's got a long or way replace to or replace the players that we have. But I, I do what feel do like we've got the squad. What do you think about it? Which is good. Well, it, 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 like this, this is the kind of games where you play Maguire, you know. You know you're going <laughs> to have less defending to do. And uh, less defending to do. Maguire, Maguire is always good on the ball. You know, he, he, slow, he slowed the tempo down, but he can pick up the pa passes. The only problem, he's just very slow in terms of like the tempo. He wanted the game to be slow. But I don't know, yesterday he, he done well, you know. It was a game where... Brighton they didn't want the ball. They just came there to literally pack the bus. He Maguire sold out the ball. He distributed the ball uh, really well. And that was all about it. it. Is when they started to ask one or two questions. You show you show him start being shaky and do all that. So with him, I don't know. With this type of games, you can always play him. It's like a you can take risks by playing him in this type of games. But apart from that, I, I won't be starting him. Not the way the manager play anyway. Where he want to push high up the pitch and just leave uh, centre-backs one-on-one -on -one with uh, what do you call it with four players you can never do that with Maguire in this team and so ultimately it's just one of those ones where slowly by slowly he, he's going to have to get uh, move uh, out of the team and find a different club because the way the manager play doesn't suit his skill set but yesterday yeah, yeah he, he, you know he what? just, okay. uh, just okay. quickly on what you said yes yeah, that's true because there was even one point where he was like in a DM position I'm like if we get hit on the counter he, he's not catching no one like he like for him to push up high, he doesn't have the, I don't think the pace or the football brain to safely get like back. Who's playing the yeah, high line? Yeah, 
Yeah, with Maguire, I think if you was to have like a team that you just know for 90 minutes, you're gonna dominate possession and have uh, and receive like less counter attacking op opportunities, you could probably get away with him in the team, you know, without yeah. a lack of proof. But the only problem is at times he, uh, his posi like his position is very bad, and even in one on one situation, he don't know how to have the intelligence. To compensate with his lack of uh, pace, you know, I see yeah. players that, that didn't have the pace, but can still defend very good in terms of like where they position themselves or what to do to kind of like slow the attack. Maguire would just literally just throw himself at them to say, "Hey, you know, <laughs> like, he doesn't do a lot." Yeah, try winning the ball back and and that's always been an issue uh, of of his. I think with Maguire as well, it's just like he's got the person, he's got the temperament, the personality to not want to be playing rotation. He even came out and said. Like he's, you know, he's trying to he's best to win his place back, which is, you know, fair enough and good. He says he's 29 and he's not used to this way. He's sitting on a bench. Fair enough again. It's reality. But I feel like but that talk, that that talk is telling me that he's leaving in the summer. Yeah, yeah, I feel like he will as well. I mean, he's club captain. Because he's minute. basically saying that I'm not, I'm, I'm not at my age. I don't want to be a bench player. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. I feel like Man United is utilizing their defenders to the max, picking them. I think Ericton Hag is picking them for the right games. I feel like he's not risking it just because, you know, certain people are unhappy. And I like that about Eric Ten Hag. And I feel like he played him in a right game um, against Redden. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, I feel, you know, I feel like if you want to be comfortable overall, you want to get someone that's got a bit of pace and is more, and more um, aware in terms of his surrounding his positioning. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like we'll, it's going to be interesting to see because you don't want to get someone to upset the apple cart. Like if you get in a timber, for example, he ain't going to be starting centre-back with Varane or Martinez, is he? So it's just like, but he's the same guy that's got a lot of big ambition. He wants to be a starter. So you don't want to cause discord in the, in the dressing room by picking the wrong guy. So it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. You know, you've got Lindelof, he's happy to just come in when called upon. And we kind of need someone else like that that will be happy to be called I mean, happy to just like play rotation and be and and, and deliver when they're called upon. So it's gonna be interesting to see how we how we do that. But for now, I feel like them are being utilized well and at the right time. But look, we can't even overlook the main man. Get me the goal, the best DM of all time, the best DM in the world. <laughs> get me this this guy right here. You know, comes AK, back from the World you, Cup. Okay, he's trying to call you up. Man. Let me let me start. Comes back from the World Cup, three goals, two assists. If I'm not correct myself, I don't know. I might be off, but you know. This guy's doing a madness, you know. People said, you know, you know, Partey's better than them. Oh, uh, Casemiro was scared, you know, for that for that game against Arsenal. Casemiro said, you know what? I'm gonna drink my tea and just be merry. You get me? Because he's come now to the UK. He's in Manny now. It's cold nights. He's drinking. He's get me his Tetley's and he's just watching all of this nonsense. This, so he comes. This guy, man, bro. This guy sounds like he's giving he's giving Casemiro World Player of the Year, award bro. This long speech. <laughs> this guy comes, yeah. The Brazilian link up. Hey, you see that? But did you see the sweetness of the second goal? You know when you're playing FIFA. And you press RT or whatever it is, and you just see it. <laughs> this guy and you know the thing about Casemiro, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. There ain't many people that can hit that ball with such vim, yeah. Keep it low, and that thing just travels. It's not like to say that thing flew in 90 miles an hour for his second goal, but he hit it with I so it, much. I saw it. That was a deflection, a little bit of deflection. Don't take anything away from this goal, bro. Let me just go. The way he hit that, yeah. And it just bent around the key. The keeper, there's no way he was catching it. Look, Casemiro, You know what? I watched yeah. it again. I don't, I don't, I don't, I actually don't think it's a deflection. I think bro, the goalkeeper just... Oh. At the same time, yeah, I think it was kind of poor goalkeeper because there's no oh, way he should be... be, be, be <laughs> Let me mute that. No, now. but don't, to, don't. to you, Casemiro got that in, in his locker, though. He got that in his locker. He got in his locker. You see the first goal, though, with the lock, like... This guy's scoring goals, yeah, that your center forwards should be scoring. This guy's scoring yeah, well, goals, dink, yeah. That dink oh, was nice, man. The dink, this is what I'm saying. And when I look at Casemiro, and I know me and Ed NK's gone back and forth with this guy, you know, he ain't got this, he ain't got that in his locker. He's just about his like passing, this. he ain't said nothing else, look, man. <laughs> look, <laughs> this guy, playmaker, that's all, man. This guy's moving like a box to box now. Do you understand? He's finding himself off. You man talked about it. Like he's doing the runs. Get me for Anthony. Like he, what's he doing? No, but do you know, do you know what's what he I, doing? Do you know, doing do you know things. What I've, do you know what I've realized? Yeah, the difference maybe. It, I think it's just his fitness. Because you could tell like there's been a, a, a different level. Because in the beginning, yeah, he did kind of look like damn. Can he pick up keep keep up with the pace of the prem? Was it mm. only me that like? Yeah, yeah. Like, I was in like his early well. games, it did look like he was off the pace, but now. He looks fit. The fact that, like you say, he can run box to box. He can be up there. He can get back in position. Like, 
Because before I never knew, like, I, I knew he was a good, like, DM, but I didn't know he had, like, a good end. He's actually got a good engine in him. So. We're allowing yeah, him to get his attacking side out because in he didn't need to do that at Real Madrid. But no, now he has Modric. Yeah, no, but the thing is, even when, when he came earlier on in the season, if you lost a uh, kind of like sorry, he used to go uh, a bit forward at time. But the thing about him is that the position that he plays, he cannot take too much risk going into the box, especially when we lose the ball. For example, if, if that ball, if Rashford had that ball on the left hand side, I don't think Asimov will make that run. You know, I don't think because one bad pass and, and, and oh. we are no, pissed no. over there. Do you know you why? Know? You're right. Rashford so, would have passed there. Rashford would have run by himself. No, it's not mm. that like the position that Casemiro plays, you cannot afford players to kind of like misplay passes because if they misplay passes and he make the, those type of like runs and it doesn't come off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the counter is, is going to be ridiculous on our side. So I think that's why he kind of like pick and choose where to make those runs and you know what well, for a dm to have the intelligence to know okay this is the right time for me to make this type of like run because i know i, I can be at the end of it uh was good but then that that, that finished too a lot of, a lot of strikers don't finish that you know anthony had a a one-on-one i think in the previous game and this game to which he, he missed it too but for him to kind of like show that level of like finishing in that situation like what well, well done to him man well done to him man hopefully we can see more of the type of like runs. He can just time it and just do more of those type of runs and the place can find him too when he actually makes himself available for those type of like attacking situations. Look, I, 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 I can't say it enough. Like this guy for this season is just such a good signing for us, man. Um, and for many seasons, man, hopefully he can, he can do well. We keep talking about Casemiro and it's a testament for him. Like he's just... When he's in the team, it just we it just another level of calmness that I have with Casemiro in that midfield. Like he just he just bosses the game well, man. If you've got someone that can contribute. Is his brain like is his is he do you know what he is? He's like he's got a good footballing brain. Like NK says he knows when to make the runs, he knows where to stay. Like I say it for time, like the good thing about him, he knows how to make the fouls that will max get him a yellow card. Or the, knows how to make the fouls. I won't get him cards. So, 100%. yeah, just generally his footballing brain and just his maturity playing and also like his experience. Isn't it? You know, that's one thing you can never give people. He's got too much experience. Look, can we talk about like the offside that was given, right? Because I was a bit confused, bro. I, I can't lie. I've, I've kind of I can't keep up. With I was confused because I thought when the player touched it, it made it made the game play back on because oh. it hit it hit the it hit the player's leg. Then it went to him. So it was like. You know what I mean? The ball, because the difference is, I thought it was onside because that ball that was getting played wasn't getting played to that player. Yeah. Who who was who 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 crossed it in in the end? Was it? Ooh, good question. Uh, was it? Who who got called offside? Was it Workhorse that got called offside? Yeah, work, work, Workhorse was the one who got caught uh, offside. But I think with the offside rule is that they keep changing it every season in terms of like uh, what is what. You know, it's a similar situation. Is who is being active and who's not uh, active and everything. Me personally, I'm confused by it because normally in previous seasons, when that ball do get deflected, it means that it's a different phrase of play. So mm. then it would have been allowed to. I don't know if the offside rule got changed at the beginning of the season or if it has. So maybe that's why. But what I know is in previous season, after it hit the, what do you call it? It hit the Reading player. It will be yeah, a different another phrase, phrase of play. Exactly. So yeah. then yeah so if he was on there then you were allowed to wait but i i, I don't know what's going on. it's the same it's the same, same uh, situation with the handball to where before if you handball it as long as it doesn't directly just score it was a goal but then now they kind of like changing the whole handball situation every, every minute it's changing. Changing. every minute is changing so as, as a football fan if you don't have the book that you are reading through the manual every time you're always going to be confused because yesterday after that, when they go scored and when i saw VAR, i said okay, why is the VAR involved for man the, the ball got deflection but I don't know. I guess we we always with this game we always have to learn something new every day. But the problem is next week similar stuff will happen with a different team, and, and that will be giving us a goal. And it's yeah, crazy because be Vekos was behind the ball; it was getting crossed into like it was. It, yeah, like I, was not. It's not to say. It's not even like to say Vekos was behind Rashford or in front of Rashford. Like Vekos was on the other side of play, and it it was just weird to me how. Yeah, they even looked at that and thought, yeah, he's he's an interrupting play because ain't that supposed to be like, oh, if you're interrupting the phase of play, if you're interrupting play, then that 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 that's 
leads to being like you know off- i don't even know but, yeah but that's weird. the thing because the reason why i never thought is that the initial ball wasn't getting played to him. it was getting played to someone else and they hit the player's leg and i thought hitting the player's leg brought that other player in yeah but it's, it's still one of them anyway. ones I mean, I was sad for Rashford because I know, like, the golden boy, the goal, the, you know, the guy that, you know, needs to be protected at all costs. He got his goal and he could have broke the record of the most consecutive, I think it was the most consecutive goals. Um, I don't even know what the exact stat is, but I feel like... Yeah, was, I, think, I think, yeah, I think he was going on a level, uh, I think most consecutive goal at home was by at a home. minor player. Yeah, by home, by a minor player. But to be honest with you, that... That is that is a lot. God was all that Rashford did in the game, man. You know, without a GA performance level is just low, yeah. man. So he needs yeah, to start yeah. adding more to his game. But yeah, yeah, it it it, it is what it is, isn't it? With, with Rashford, as I said, he's a as as uh, we we'll say, he's a forward player. And as long as he's scoring, we can talk. When the goal stop, then we can look at at, at the other stuff. But we'll, we'll see, innit? We'll it was, see. It was it was time. I'm gonna just switch the topic because I you know that Rashford. If you're hearing this. I don't agree with NK. Get me, you're the goal. You get me. Jump on the show soon. You get me when you hit. Look, we made timely subs, man. Timely subs. We made timely subs. We got a lot of games coming up, thick and fast. And um, Manchester United, I think by the seventieth minute or just over that, we had Casemiro off the pitch. We had uh, Rash off the pitch. Bruno off the pitch. We didn't, we didn't make timely. We didn't make timely stuff. Everything is injured. Ericsson, I know Ericsson. I thought he was a timely sub, but then I'm hearing that he's on crutches, and I was just like, oh, it's, on, it's, on cru- it's on crutches, man. Ericsson's on crutches, man. Ericsson's on crutches. You already know that's at least two plus three weeks or more. It's just long. But then th- that should that should that shouldn't be a, a problem because apparently he's a sub, he's a, a stop guy, a, a stop gap. He's the weakest link in our team because he can't defend. So look. Now that he's not playing, let, let's see what the team can do. Look, we we got we got the team back. We got leads, you know. Hopefully, Fred can do what they do there. Current attack. No, we got Crystal Palace. We, we got, got Palace as well. Yeah, Crystal yep. Palace. We got I think Le- Leeds back to back. Like, no, the game are coming to come fast, man. Hopefully, we, and can we got hold Barcelona up. too at some point in there too. And what? if we qualify for the the what do you call it, the finals, if we make it, but well, we should make it, then. We will have that straight after Barcelona game, so lift that yeah. silver. I'm hoping, man. Lift that silver. Look, who was your man of the match, NK? Though, look, my man of the match yeah, have to be Pastor Fred, cause look, he, he, he <laughs> what? <laughs> let's see <laughs> how, bro. <laughs> bro, how long was Fred on? Oh my days! There's gotta be say, there's gotta say. be rules to this. No, look, let's see. He scored one goal, made one assist, this- and. And I know in the coming weeks here, yeah, we're going to need him. If, listen to me. In the coming days... he comes if, up with some random people. I never would have said Fred. Listen, look. In the next coming games, if Ericsson is injured here, yeah, Fred is going to need all the motivation he needs. So I am giving <laughs> oh him <laughs> to motivate him because boy, oh boy. <laughs> we're going to need him to be on his best okay, behavior, man. Dumb. Oh this my days, man said... Said you must, you must be nice to Fred, man. But he, he, to be honest, he did come on. He scored a goal and made an assist, though. So, his, his I mean, if we're doing sweet, it by though. GA, if we're doing it by GA, which most of you like to do the whole GA stuff, then he, he did get a goal and assist. And his goal was very good goal, too. So, I'm Team GA today. <laughs> <laughs> Brazilian link up. Edwin, you was your man of the match. Do you know what? I know we had Casemiro two goals, great performance, nice thing, good long shot. Um, Anthony, good game. One of his better games. I give it to Wan Bissaka. I just give it to him on the on the basis Sexo, of where yeah. he was and where he is now. Like he was out of there. They were trying to get him out of there. He even done his own individual training. Like attacking wise, he's looking he's looking more confident going forward. Like you remember before, he wasn't really that. Like he's trying. He gets in the danger areas. He's He's improving. We know he can tackle. So defensively, we know even if he gets beaten, he's good at recovering. But I just thought overall his game brought out the best in Anthony, which which alternatively brought the best out in the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll no, give it I to Wamba Saka. I, I think that was, a, that was a good shout. I think Wamba Saka has been doing brilliantly over the last few games, man. You know, I mean, I have to rate we, we know you, we know your one is Casemiro, so there's no point you saying it, man. <laughs> you already know the the, the intro I've given Cass. Look, the guy, the main man. This, this guy. 
two goals from a the, the, the myth, the legend. The myth, the legend, the unspoken. Get me, the guy that's going to go in mythical. Hey, books are being written about this guy right about now. This look, guy's look, what he done. Look, what he, hasn't even, he hasn't even won a trophy yet. I've met you. Bro, this guy said the... books are going to be written. <laughs> the two, you know the ones where you, you want to go and watch him just to say you've done it? Like, he's 30 years old. There's still time. Guys, buy your tickets, bro. You need to go and watch Casemiro. I'm going to have to watch Casemiro. I've got Ronaldo out the way, but he's a pig. So now it's it's Casemiro. I gotta watch him. You get me? So I'll be there. Look, that guy, both of his goals. Like it's not just it's not just a DM. So for that reason, but Anthony, big shout out to Anthony because Anthony, he had the best game in a Manchester United shirt, and I have to rate that what he's been doing. Look, I'm hoping that he continues to build from this man because he's like I said, I've, you know what? He's got shout a lot. Out to Enk Shout out to NK as well. NK did say he's going to start getting better when we were down. No, no, no but, but look, all Anthony did to do here yeah, is skip <laughs> past the guy doing the game and then uh, the bandwidth. The bandwidth, board, ain't, the bandwidth yeah? don't even want to hear what NK's got to say. See that? <laughs> the bandwidth, yeah. As soon as he opened his mouth to start talking nonsense, it started slowing down for him. I told you, bruv. Look. Look. <laughs> Anthony has had his best game in the match. Let, let me just leave it at that. He's taken on guys now. You know, he's linking up. The thing about Anthony is decision. It's not just about runners. It's his decision making as well. Sometimes he gets the ball. He gets very excited. He just wants to do a skill. And he makes poor decisions. Like, if it is that you're going to hold on to the no, ball. Wait, friend, let, me, the let, ball. Me, let me ask you this, though. Let me ask you this. Because when he scored a goal against Everton, you were a bit kind of like critical about his performance, even though he scored a goal. Now, in this game, he didn't score a goal. But then you kind of like love this performance. So which one are you? Are you on the GA side or are you on the performance side? Bro, I'm on the complete side. But at the end of the day, so you see with Rash, I appreciate that this guy has come from the pits and now is coming to be banging in this many goals. I ain't seen it. I'm deprived. I can't lie. I ain't seen this in years. You know what I mean? With and with Anthony, I know he's got a lot in him. That guy, you bought him for that money for the reason. And I know he's got it. Isn't it? How old is he? Twenty two. He's super yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's twenty two. Bro, Anthony could do it all. This is why I'm so on to Anthony so much because he can do it all. And we're seeing signs, little glimpses. Yes, yeah, against people may say it's yes, yeah, against you know what I mean? Like Redden, I don't care who it's against. When I see him doing it, I'm happy for him. And I'm going to praise him when he does it. And long may it continue, man, because he's got all of it in his locker, man. Get me. I want to start saying, but he's I, think, I, think, I think, I think, I uh, think, Weghorst too coming in too mm. has also benefits Anthony quite a lot because now too, I think. He actually has someone to also kind of like do that link up play with, especially with the manager moving him a bit more central too. So I think that's also kind of like benefiting him too. But ultimately, I think Tim Hag is just doing everything he can to get that boy uh, involved because he don't want the pressure on that boy. And it looked like the pressure was coming on to that boy. And I think mm. he don't want the pressure on that boy. So he's doing everything to help with that. Thanks for the time, my Edwin. Look, guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know who your man of the match was. But until the next time, peace. We go again, man. Come on. Peace, peace. man. Peace. Peace.